everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Super Desperation Radio. Hope everybody's having a good Monday. I'm kind of having a good Monday, because my Sunday definitely wasn't that great. Could have been better. I think everybody's in San Francisco could have been a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, you guys play like shit. Yeah. Well, it's not that they played like shit, it's just that they are shit. Wow. Damn. Wow, Thank it's you, like baby. that. Thank you for correcting that. I have to. I mean, I can't let shit like that slide. Goddamn. I know. At this point, you know, I can't even deny it. I can't even say, like, you know, like, we're going to do better next week. I hope we do. <laughs> you guys are one and two now? We are one and two. We are tied with your St. Louis Rams. God, I'm sorry. Yeah. You see, you guys aren't the perfection that are the Raiders. All right? The Raiders are a perfect 0-3. <laughs> they do not have the blemish of a win right now. <laughs> Why ruin a good thing by trying to play? Man. But the 49ers, what was it? They haven't scored anything, any points in the fourth quarter at all this season yet? Right. These are hey, people these, these are people who get paid money to score points, and they're basically only working half days. Damn. That's got to be the life. Yeah. That's what happens when you're a state employee. But anyway, uh, but, they're, but they're not. They're not. They're they're definitely not uh, paid for by the proceeds and tax dollars of the San Francisco and California people. As well, they they kind of are. I know they kind of are. I'm trying not to make that a uh, direct con- uh, correlation, though. Yeah. I don't want us to be too disenfranchised before the fall, the inevitable <laughs> implosion of the NFL. Oh man, you mean um, uh. Like, Goodell's just going to bring down an entire ship with him? I think he is. I think Goodell is, like, you know, pretty much gone from puppet on a string to, hey, I can move on my own. I got no strings to hold me down. I'm a real boy! No, he's really not. Yep. It's a real boy. I mean, he's a boy, but he's like, you know. (laughs) Anyway, beyond that, I don't want to get too into that. Uh, We actually had a pretty good weekend, I think. uh, You know, we had Tokyo Game Show, which uh, I didn't know they were going to do a tournament there, but that was pretty cool. You know, that was was nice. Uh, We had Guts on the East Coast, or was that Midwest? I don't know. East Coast. East East Coast, Coast, yeah. And I heard that was pretty uh, interesting. I didn't get to catch any of it, but uh, Jason Lamb did link me to a hazy photo of someone playing KOF 11, so. A hazy photo, like, we have reports that people did play KOF (laughs) at Guts. They are unsubstantiated. They, uh, let, let, let me see. Let me see this photo. Let, let are they playing in the chat. woods? It, they might as well have because the lighting was really shitty. Oh, maybe they were in the bathroom this time. <laughs> let me see if I can find it. Anyway, I'll, it's I'll a find really it. Really hairy dude playing <laughs> KOF eleven in the woods. Oh. So, uh, just way off topic. If you guys have any questions for us for, on today's show that we answer at the end of the show, shoot us a tweet at SDRcast, and we'll get to your question in a timely manner. Right? That's how it works? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah shoot, shoot us a tweet at SDRCast. Don't ask us in chat because we're just going to ignore you. Unless you're our resident fact checker because, you know, we can't ignore him. Yeah. We kind of need them. We kind of need them. Yep. A little bit. A little bit. So, but, uh, obviously, look. TGS was pretty much all the news that came out. Yeah. Like, everything that we got was from TGS. Yeah, that's all I can... That's that's pretty much it. I mean, like, that's actually kind of cool because in recent years, there hasn't been a lot of stuff that's been just coming out of TGS. It's kind of been spread out a little bit more. So to see that TGS kind of just, like, unloaded the, the feed bag of information again, that's cool for them. Yeah, I think it's good that we finally had a fairly big TGS. In terms of fighting games, obviously, you know, TGS has always been fairly big in terms of other stuff, you know, just gen- games in general, but this year fighting games got a lot of love at TGS, so. God, they needed it. <laughs> I mean, what happened to the last TGS? They tried to have a, like a super ba- super battle opera at the same time, and it was just like, oh, that that's that's okay. Don't do that, guys. We don't need Wasn't that like years two ago? Years ago? Was yeah. that two years ago? Two years ago? Yeah. yeah, it's been a couple now. Yeah. All right, so where do you guys want to start? TGS news. Where do uh, you start? There was a lot coming out of Final there. Fantasy 15. <laughs> oh man, that's not, not TGS news. That was <sighs> okay. Brotherhood of the Traveling uh, Materia. Hey, I, I, I thought it was Brotherhood of the Traveling. Um, you know, 
tank tops or whatever the hell those things are called. Yeah, tank none top. of those guys had sleeves, huh? I don't know. I, just, I don't pay attention. Maybe it's based in California. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Muscle Beach? Is that where it is? Yeah, exactly. Sick. That All would right. explain I'm, I'm the uh, gigantic down. deformed turtle. Yo, the gigantic deformed turtle? I'm definitely playing this game. <laughs> uh, uh, the 15-hour boss Beach. fight? Yeah, Muscle oh, Beach good Lord. and deformed turtles. This is my game. Damn. I don't understand how that is a a point of attraction for anyone when a game developer tells you, this boss fight can take up to 15 hours! Like, fuck you, that's a job! Hope you don't have to go to work tomorrow! <laughs> so I guess 15 is an MMO as well. I honestly paid no attention to this news, by the way. 15? No, it's, it's not an MMO. It's But but it has a 15-hour boss fight? It's, well, 12 kind of... Actually... Twelve kind of had like MMO mechanics, and thirteen I didn't play so much to remark on it in any authority. But it seemed the way. I, I was joking about Final Fantasy fifteen discussion, honestly. Uh, Look, Kelly's not here. Let's walk away. <laughs> so uh, there, there's this new Street Fighter game. I, I know nothing about it. It's called like Street Fighter Omega, right? That's what it's called. Is it is new? Is that a new game or is it like what? What's going? On? Like I have got. I don't know. Like, so, I literally okay, okay, know nothing okay. about it. So Street Fighter Four. Ultra Omega Edition is a version where characters have all these new and wacky moves that aren't added into the official Ultra release. Here are my condensed thoughts in five seconds. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Essentially, what it is is it's kind of like they. It's kind of like a Rainbow Edition. But at the same time, they also try and make the characters like other incarnations of the character. Like, Sim definitely looks like uh, EX plus Alpha kind of style. He has a yoga legend. He's got a move that pulls people in. Uh, he has no height restriction on his dives. Uh, Guile has Charlie Super as his EX. Uh, yeah, he has, he has Crossfire Blitz and oh, Sonic, br Sonic Break. So he can do the delayed sonic booms, but that's an EX instead of a super. So wait, wait, why isn't that just not Guile standard? Okay, so Guile is actually really interesting in that he got Remy's cold blue kick. Um, he has Sobots, but I guess they're like the baby versions of Crossfire Blitz. Okay. And then he has like the full Crossfire Blitz where he does like the Charlie version where he does like the sonic boom empowered backhand at the end of it. The thing uh, about his... Um so bad kicks is it seems like one hits low and like one overheads and stuff I think or was that someone else I was thinking of but like each hit was like kind of different yeah they, they look different than you know just traditional so, length so what kicks from DJ here's my question as somebody who has no idea about this shit is that this is what just going to be a free update added mode to ultra how is that going to work it's a free DLC for ultra um, I think it's like an addition select thing where you just go select Omega. But since it's addition select, does that mean you can't like use it online or anything? Well, obviously. Did you see what that Blanco was doing? <laughs> that shit online, while amazingly fun to use on someone, but probably ruin somebody else's day. I just... Maybe this is me. I don't see the fucking point. Is this going to sell more copies of Ultra? Hence the fart noises. I mean, it's not. I can actually tell you want my rationale? Yeah, sure. So this actually looks incredibly fucking slopped together by the way everything animates. There's no mm -hmm. polish on it whatsoever. This is probably the easiest way they can get feedback for creating either a additional update to four or transitioning into another game. I would what say better that. way to bamboozle everyone into Play testing for them and telling them what they enjoy, then by just putting it in front of them and be like, "Oh yeah, this move's really cool. These mechanics are neat. Oh, there's a lot of juggle stuff that you can't do in regular four. Let me so just what take you're all these me notes is this down." Is like the pre-alpha for five. Yeah, alpha four. I mean, I can see that. It's like, that whoa, at least makes kids some really sense. like Charlie, and for some reason, everyone really likes Yoga Legend Dawson. <laughs> well, that was the best Dawson. I mean, yeah, it was. It was also the coolest. Yeah. And then Blanca has all these, like, just ridiculous looking shit. He has completely 90 degree angle up ball. Yeah. Damn. And he's got <laughs> EX ball that hits multiple times. It, it looks kind of cool, but I'm also just like, uh. What's this about him burrowing? Like, he goes, he burrows, he, he pulls a Naruto, you know? 
where he digs on the ground and then launches himself out of the ground and uppercuts you? Oh, yeah. So Blanca is strongest in the village where Christ the Redeemer is. Exactly. Got it. <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, honestly, if I had Ultra, I would mess around with this just for shits and giggles. Like, hey, let's crack a 24-pack and play Omega. Yeah. It honestly, it does, it does seem that it's the type of game mode where it's just like, oh, you know, I'm kind of, you know, the serious, serious time for is gotten me tight. Time to loosen up by playing E Honda that has command grab bear hug that does like sixty percent. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm watching this video right now. This is Rainbow Edition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all this yeah. shit is. Like basically. Look, Rainbow Edition was fun as shit back in the day because it's like, oh hey, look while I'm waiting to play real Street Fighter 2, let me go play this Street Fighter 2. Whenever I do an uppercut, I travel the entire screen. I go underneath the screen, and I hit them no matter what. Or let me do this uppercut where I throw out like 20 goddamn projectiles in the air and keep hitting them, and they can't do shit. It was dumb. This is yeah. dumb. I like how they're going like halfsies on this, like, hey, sh- hey, guys, should we bring back parrying? Well, maybe Ryu should get a parry. We'll see yeah, where that, that goes. That, it's like, I can't even understand how that one works, because he has like... He can release a focus out of it? Yeah, it's like EX pair. It's basically the uh, the Goken move, except it doesn't do red health damage. Wait, did, they, did they give Guile Remy's, like, dive yeah, kick? Yeah, he has cold blue kick. Okay. It looks terrible, but he has it. Yeah, like, it looks like they were just like, how are we going to animate this right and still keep it like Guile? And it's like, uh... Guile's <laughs> EX Sonic Boom is Charlie Super... Yes, thank you to two. Welcome to two minutes ago. Yes, to <laughs> you. I'm watching this shit. This is stupid. Yeah, th- actually, that video's fine because some of those things are kind of neat in the sense that they're callbacks to. No, yeah, uh, it, it looks yeah. fun. to good Capcom yeah. games. Though. I'm yeah, definitely say what we're all thinking. <laughs> I'm but definitely the, uh, way more interested in Omega than anything <laughs> else for related at this point. I mean, yeah. I don't know if anyone watched the the E Honda one. I couldn't figure it out. What? He has a move where he throws salt, and I didn't see it hit once. Huh. <laughs> he just throws salt. It's like, yeah, that's a sumo thing. I'm like, oh, does it cause it's a projectile? Does it cause like? No, stupid. Damage? It's a CVS two intro. Okay. No, it's it's like it's it's meme bait. <laughs> that's alpha. all it is. It's fucking meme bait. Yeah, is that is that what it is? It's like, oh, he's his Honda's so salty. Throwing the no, salt. You throw, you throw the salt, and then obviously it creates a a barrier on the ground. And when you sit in it, you build a ba- a battery meter. You make sure you don't overheat, though, because you're playing Robo Honda. Oh shit! I play the fuck oh, out of Robo Honda. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if they just brought like fucking like the rage meter back, and every time he throws salt, it just builds up. Every time you do low roundhouse, it drops a mat. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You just like throw the salt, and then you just sit in the salt. Could you purify the ring and then you get meter, get yeah. ultra meter or something? <laughs> well, Why good not? lord! I mean, it's basically the equivalent to a uh, you know Arxis Games EX characters, I guess. Yeah, I assume. And I mean, I don't think it's like a horrible idea. It's definitely not hurting anything, but no, at the same it's, it's time, kinda it's kind of silly. Like... But I'm actually curious if my idea has any merit, and we're going to see some of these things implemented in the future. I can I already. Mean, I... I could definitely see that, especially with like some things like maybe they will bring characters back or you know make new characters again, which apparently is a sin to certain people. But whatever. I mean, I don't think people care as much at this point. But uh, yeah, it kind of does feel like a Tekken Revolution almost kind of thing. But that was kind of cool. But it was free, and you couldn't get whatever character you unlocked. And there was definitely hangups. But I'm sure some of that stuff carried over to Tekken Seven once it comes out. So I mean, there's definitely a lot of uh, things that they'll just be like, hey, let's try this out. And like you were saying, oh, do you actually like juggles? You don't like, you know, you know, not doing damage. You know, these these are things you like, right? Uh, we'll, we'll bring it back. Because the thing is, is uh, older games had they had their juggle systems, but they are a bit more lax for the ones that they're trying to mimic. So stuff like. Uh, like Yoga Legend, that's a really good example. Like the EX series has very particular juggle rules, but it's kind of like almost anything goes. Whereas four has its convoluted ST third strike ripoff, and then just kind of like eh, maybe people don't want to deal with that kind of crap. If it put them in the air, I just want to boot them. Yeah. Let me boot them. Yeah. I mean, what I like though is that uh, EX moves are supers. But 
they don't they do a good amount of damage, but they're not ridiculous. All right, now this like is here's here's the thing. Now this is something I was talking with a friend with uh, a couple days ago about Street Fighter Four system in general, where they basically fucked themselves on how to handle certain characters, especially Guile, with the inclusion of supers and ultra and EXs, where they, you know basically you get two supers, but one of them is, I guess, only available in a certain situation. Now, in Guile's case, they gave him two flash kick supers, both which cannot be done in any optimal situation, I'm assuming, because I've never seen it fucking hit anybody. And well, the, the, I won't get into the particulars of that, but go on. Like, so basically, like they they were kind of defaulting to like, hey, well, we guess we better make these EXs like kind of good, and they didn't for him. I mean, I guess they like, EX Sonic Boom is okay, but like the whole point was like. The reason why we had multiple supers in the previous games was because, hey, you know, these characters should have options versus they should have, you know, one option and then be forced to use their super meter for EXs pre predominantly. So in Guile's case, he got really inhibited because of that because, like, you know, all of his fucking ultras were, were trash. And so they finally gave him Charlie's supers again, and it's just kind of, but they made him EXs, and now it's like, wow, this will never fly in a fucking, like, you know, in a competitive sense, in a competitive ring. When they could have just said, why don't we just change one of his ultras to fucking Charlie Super? Or maybe change his super to Charlie Super, you know? There are so many characters that line of thought is true for. It's unbelievable. It just, they just like, shot themselves in the foot. Oh, it, yeah. Well, it's, it's like this. Why would you ever use Super when you get Ultra for free, essentially? That is true. And EX moves are very precious. Yeah. So it's like, why would... It's like Supers are the... You see them in the Blue Moon when you put them in a situation that, hey, I have a 100 meter, and they're in kill range for regular Atomic Buster, and uh, this uh, will never happen again. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, it's a freaking white whale. Yeah. Yeah. No, not white whale, white horse, sorry. <laughs> no, it's kind of like the white whale. <laughs> <laughs> My metaphors are all mixed up, sorry. Um I just I just kind of feel like that they they've been holding on to that system a little too long. Like they already they already like gone on record as to saying they're not like, you know, stone stone cold set in the fucking ultra, you know, it has to be one move. They they obviously mm. added ultras, then they added the double ultra, and I'm just like, why don't you just add a third one that fucking works? Hmm. <laughs> you know well, how hard is did that? Did you say something about Stone Cold? You know you can watch all Stone Cold's greatest matches on the WWE Network for just nine ninety nine. Just $9 only nine ninety nine. And yeah, you know if you know. go to Cold Stone and you tip them, they have to sing. Ah. Mm -hmm. I hope the glass shatters. <laughs> and then one of them stuns you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You gotta sing the, the disturbed version of the opening, yeah. Oh god, that was so bad. Lemonhead Psycho. Yeah, that was that was that's so much better forgotten at this point. Yep. Mm. Had to bring it back. You did. But uh, so that's that that's something that like I figure like you know like Sanchez is saying that this is you know them trying to fill the waters on hey what are people going to enjoy about you know Street Fighter Four when we inevitably move this to the next game, and I'm kind of just like you could have did this years ago, mm -hmm. just the right way. You didn't have to do this you know cloak and dagger like hey here's a free update what a bunch of wacky shit you can't use in tournament, you know they could have just yeah. fucking did it like in AE or AE 2012 or even Ultra. What was the point of, you know, any of this, basically? It makes you wonder, because there's obviously some planning that they need to do to get this into the game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how long have they had this in their pocket? I don't know. I mean, I, I assume they had to have it. Obviously, Gorilla. there's been a... I mean, it looks... It's half finished, but there's half work done. Like, this has to have been something that has been thought about. I, I would I would wager that they've been thinking about it since day one because like you're coming from a rich history of games that have like a wealth of just moves and special moves and super moves to, to pull from. They probably had to think to themselves, man, we're probably not making the right decision excluding this one super from the game, but it fits our scheme better, you know. So they kind of just like they they put the system over the characters, you know. 
They haven't shown anything for Bison, have they? No. It's Banish. It's gotta yeah. be. They're gonna give him Banish. Why wouldn't they? Like, hey guys, Psycho Banish, you wanted it for years, now you can finally use it, it's probably gonna suck. <laughs> yeah, I was like, now you can find out that it's really worthless without a groove. Yeah, we made it exactly like CVS 2, and hey, that one guy that thought it was an overhead, you were wrong. <laughs> nah, they'll just give him the fireball. Oh, well, Psycho shot to... or Psycho Explosion? <laughs> Uh, the one from uh, EX, obviously. The charge. Okay. Oh, well, I guess that would be a super version. Or yeah. the EX version of it. Where you just throw the stupid fireball and then you can charge it if you use the EX version. I just want Guy to be able to command grab off a target combo. I want Soul Illusion to come back. You, you know what I want? I want Cody to actually have his fucking Final Fight costume. Is that so goddamn hard to ask? <laughs> or, Jesus. Uh, they really or, just like, like I, actually, I'll, I'll come in on that with like, they really, for, for his alternate costume, they got so close to it and they were like, let's roll up his sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's got, he's got, he's sleeveless and he has the bro right. tattoos. Yeah, he's, he's wearing a, like a tank top. Yeah, he's got a tank yeah. top and he's got like the super bro tattoos, like the half done, like tribal, the, Miscellaneous star with wings on it, dude. Give him That's his old hair, dude. Give him his old cowlick back. You know. You know. Just, just. I want to touch this real quick. Cody, one of my favorite characters. That third costume they added, the um, the orange jumpsuit, right? Mm -hmm. Oh right, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, modern day, no Hamburglar looking uh, prison <laughs> garb. And I'm thinking this is a step in the right direction. I might actually like this costume a lot. And then for some reason, the iconic Pumas that he wears are. Replaced with the uh, sandals. I mean, I'm sure that's what prisoners actually have to wear, you know? Open mm -hmm. foot so shoes. They're, gonna, they're just going to take his kicks away. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, who's going to take Cody's kicks away in prison? Right? right? The dude's got <laughs> he punches through walls. <laughs> the question is, why does he even wear the jumpsuit? Yeah. Because he hmm. respects the CEOs. Yeah, he comes back, dude. Also, my bad. They're not Pumas. I think they're K-Swiss. <laughs> ah, K-Swiss, fine shoe. Maybe yeah, Capcom doesn't want to, maybe Capcom doesn't want to pay the licensing. I don't know. Should. Yeah. I used to only exclusively wear. Now I wear New Balance because 70% of the stuff's made in America. Ooh. Huh. That was like a commercial. Man, I, don't know. I think that's Breaking all we are. We're just, SDR is just basically <laughs> shilling for different companies. You know, if we could actually sell out, this would be worth it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're advertise. still waiting on Pizza Patron to get back to us. Uh, I'm telling you, man, as soon as we get that paycheck, Seg's going to be like, thanks for the money, guys. <laughs> just off with it. Yep. Chuckling the entire way. <laughs> Here you guys go. And he throws us a couple of cents. That was the change. <laughs> uh, thanks. So, I mean, uh, like, let, let's see. Like, they're going to obviously, uh, I, the thing I don't get is they're pushing this shit. They're pushing Omega mode. Like, it's something that people are going to be really excited for. Well, it is a selling point because people will say Street Fighter 4 is bland, boring, drab, all this crap. This changes it. Like, it's dumb, but it, it changes it. You can enjoy it with your friends. Like, oh, my God, look how stupid this is, guys. Look what I just did. You, ha, 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 ha. I you know what the, the, the best version of Street Fighter 4 was? The best version of Street Fighter 4 was the Virtual Fighter 5 Final Show on April Fool's. That game. was so good. That was the best version. Holy of shit, that was the best. I thought you were going to say, you know, Street Fighter 4 in the streets, you know, before the actual Street Fighter 4 came out. We can't talk about that. That was so good. But yeah, <laughs> Virtual Fighter 5. Oh, yeah, Fighter we can't talk about that. That was the shit. They gave, you know, uh, they gave Akira the, the Ultra version. Of his like shoulder check combo, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, quick, quick. John uh, was just real, or was just uh, Ken. Oh, yeah, yeah, somebody has helpfully pointed out. Uh, Cody wears Adidas. You guys are idiots. Yeah, he wears shell toes. No, yeah, they're it. they're shell toes. Yeah, well, frauds. Huh. Look at you respect the Lord, dipshits. Kelly's hey. not here to tell you that. For all you know, I purposely got them wrong. No, you're just an idiot, man. No, that's <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you right that. now. <laughs> Night guy wears Reeboks, sticking to it. You're done. He wears I, sneakers. I apologize, they were Skechers sneaky. the whole time. Wow. Nah. Nobody wears Skechers. What kind of shoes would ninjas wear, like, today? Skechers. Yeah, probably. Uh, British Knights. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> the light up BKs? The light up, <laughs> the light up BKs. He's got the Velcro, man. Like, he's got to make sure that, you know... They have shoot- time to tie his shoes, man. I'm a fucking ninja. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but when he has to take them off, that's the issue. No, nah, no, he's just wearing loafers, man. <laughs> Dude running around in moccasins. <laughs> And uh, what else? What else do we have coming out of TGS? You know the oh Exard well, stuff. Yep, we got uh, we got actual gameplay footage finally of Sin and El Felt and El Fuerte. They both look really fun, actually. Like really different mechanics for gear, like different feel to the characters. Even if they have some moves that look similar, obviously Elf has a move that definitely looks like Robokai's horse. <laughs> yeah. We're, the thing but, about gear has been is that every character has been incredibly unique, like regardless of who they are. Even like the somewhat clone characters like Holy Order Soul or yeah. Robokai, like they've all been unique. Like I feel like some of these moves do overlap with older characters, but maybe because the other ones aren't coming back. You know, they're trying that's, to that's what I'm thinking too, is that you know if you see something that looks like an old move, it's probably because that character is gone. Yeah. Uh oh. So that's not a good sign. Fuck, that means we're not going to get Killick. Yeah. He was definitely in Guilty Gear. Yeah, well. I'm out, guys. <laughs> That's the only reason why I started playing Soul Gear. Yep. God. Just waiting but, for Killick to come back. Honestly, Sin looks a lot cooler than I would have ever given him credit for being. Because At least he's I not a nerd with a visual tail. Yeah. What? I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. Because vi- visually, Sin look doesn't look that cool, but move wise, he looks really interesting. His normals all look pretty neat so far. What we've what, from what we've seen, and it'll be interesting to see how his gameplay mechanics work. Whether his specials have to chain a specific way, or because a lot of people said he looks like in terms of the way they seem to think he plays, he might be like Hawkman from Blaze Blue, but. There's no guarantee that that's going to be true at all. He looks super fast, so if he had Hockman damage, like, holy shit. <laughs> actually, well, it looks like he does. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he might actually have Hockman damage. Oh. But then again, that game in general has pretty high damage, so... Yeah. I do enjoy his Ride to Lightning. That is... Like, I'm surprised they haven't given that to Kai yet. But he's too vanilla. Which, so can... which one is that? He That's is ride the lightning, but he can change directions. Yeah. Oh, where he has beast cannon ride the lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's like it. It looks really cool. Uh, it it combos once you get a hit, so like you don't have to worry about like you know, fucking it up because you just do forward back forward, I guess. And it just totally you know kind of just dwarfs the original ride the lightning, which is fine. But at the same time, it's also <laughs> like, damn it. <laughs> Not bitter about that at all. He is the younger generation. His sacred edge also looks a lot better. <laughs> yeah. His DP also looks a lot better. You know, really, he's just a better character. He does Kai. look like a better character. I think Kai. Chris he has Kai's old haircut. He has Kai's old haircut. What can just I pack say it about up. that? Chris, just pack it up. Just yeah, pack it up, Chris. Still going to play Kai. Sucks. Damn I'm going to ship you out, dude. It's over. So let's talk about this elephant character. All right. I, for one, am super excited. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I like I have one. Like, uh, she has cables moves in some she's tight as Fuck, she empties clips. The whole rifle stance thing, like supoib. I do you like just that. Go into a stance and you just pull. Yeah. You know and what my gets... goal is with that game now? Is fighting a slayer, baiting, wake up eternal wings, and as he's flying through the air, rifle the shit out of him. <laughs> like, pull. Just yell pull. Just pull. <laughs> <laughs> Because in the in the little notes we saw, there was a note that said the longer your crosshairs are on somebody, the more damage. I wonder if she's going to have certain effects for like counter hit. Are there clean hits in Exard? Because I don't know. I don't think there's anything that would lead us to believe they are because Grand Viper is old Grand Viper and he doesn't have signed wider for soul. Yeah, okay. I haven't seen any clean hits in any of the okay. videos I've seen. That would be the only way so, to check, right? Yeah. 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 So it'll be interesting to see just what kind of like counter hit damage she can get or if you'll be ever be able to actually combo off the rifle shot or if that's going to be more like a, a one hit or a combo ender maybe sometimes. Well, one of the ideas you could have is if you're meeting somebody from full screen, you could just have the tracer on them the entire time. Like, I wonder if that counts. Can like, you while do they're that down. without the stance, though? Well, the thing is, go- 
Oh, you can right. knock them down and just go into stance immediately. And it locks on them as soon as you pull it out, right? Well, it does. I don't think it locks on. I think it goes to a certain spot. Like, it might be that you dictate where you want it to start, and then you can move it around from there. Okay. Because that's actually pretty cool for zoning, because if you kind of just keep that site, like, in that area where, like, you know, your opponent doesn't want to be, but they have to be at the same time to approach, and you're just like, yeah, come towards me. This shit's waiting for you. Yeah, like, there's a lot of footage where people are messing around with her where she picks off, like, preemptively where they're going to be. Like, oh, you're going to air dash. I'm just going to shoot right here. It's the old uh, Space Invader strategy. Shoot where they're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Leading your shots. Who would have thought? Exactly. And yeah. the uh, the other stuff that she has, she actually has really good looking normals. <laughs> like yeah, she has the book. cable stand fears from Marvel. Yeah. She has uh, cable shots, bouquet normals that are really good. She seems like she has a standing low, which those are never bad. No. Uh, an overhead from what I've gathered from one of the videos that they showed where she tosses a grenade and then runs up and does a very like slow overhead chop bouquet. Oh, so that's yeah, pretty neat. Yeah. And then the, gr the grenade mechanic's actually pretty interesting too and where you can pull the pin and it seems that the but. Is he breaking up for anyone else? Yeah, yeah he he's definitely breaking up. Okay. Because his net's dying on him again, I think. Paul? Yep. Um, what else do you think about this character? Uh, basically, just what what Alex was starting to talk about before he vanished into the mist is the the grenades are actually really kind of cool because it seems like she just has and I've, I'm trying to think there's a character I've seen like this other than just Cable with grenades like this. Oh, Deadpool kind of has something like this too, doesn't he? Well, yeah, not he as does much. Throw grenades. Yeah, the pineapples, but they're mm -hmm. not the same. The fact that she can pull a pin and hold it until she throws the grenade, which is a hit, and then it can explode right after, and you can combo off that. That seems like it might be an opportunity. Uh, Leona uh, had something like that in old KOFs. She, like, oh, yeah? sticks a grenade on you, and then uh, she can detonate oh, it whenever she wants. Okay. I that forgot to pay the cable bill. Oh. Yeah, I see that. Time to call Mr. Time Warner. Mr. Jesus. Warner, uh, uh, here's your money. Yeah. Uh, so, you mentioned the grenade mechanics. Yeah. Did you mention how it also does damage to her if she holds onto it for too long? No, I didn't actually say that. That's yet. actually pretty neat. I haven't seen if she can KO herself with it, which is my goal. Like, <laughs> if you're ever just going to lose and be like, I won't die by your technique, pulls pin, blocks for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to be remembered me as I live. <laughs> Holding strawberry grenades. <laughs> just like pull it and hold onto it and run forward. Yeah. Uh, actually, it seems like if she explodes herself, it doesn't deal damage to the other guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, man. That's so, and it's not even going to be like Faust Bag, where both players No, it doesn't seem like... It? Well, that would let her combo break. Well, but, I mean, no, Faust Bag, you had to throw Faust Bag, and you didn't really yeah. get to combo break with that. Yeah, but that's a little different. Like, he combo broke himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, if she's just holding onto it and getting hit. Yeah, then. she just has a deterrent, where it's like, oh, I'm my my blocking's terrible. Let me just do wake up, pull the pin. <laughs> That'd be kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, I like a shotgun. Actually, yeah, the, the shotgun stance is actually really interesting in that she has like a ton of moves out of it. Uh, she she has years of war character. Yeah, she has command roll, uh, face check, I think a command throw from it. Oh, weird. Um, and then like the two shotgun blasts that I've noticed. One, so that one seems really right. Yeah, I think one of them, there's like a stronger one and then a weaker one, I think. Uh, yeah, one wall sticks. But I don't know what the other one does. If it's just like a normal hit or what. I think the yeah. other one's a normal hit because like you can't combo into the one that might wall stick. Because the one, I've seen somebody combo into the shotgun blast, but it didn't do a wall stick. Hmm, interesting. Which would be fair because like if you were just like free wall sticks all day. Oh yeah, that would be, that's, hey, extend your combo forever. Yeah, yeah. and then... uh the roll seems like it has some invulnerability to it. So she yeah, just, she sense. just becomes a Gears of War character. Mm. Which is pretty neat. And honestly, with Slayer not being plus R Slayer, I am very excited to play somebody different. <laughs> You're like, and my character is butt cheeks. I'll be yep. playing you. Yep. Potemkin wonder... sucks. Bedman's the new hotness. <sighs> That's the other thing. I'm kind of like, I'm looking at it, and I just saw that, like, you know, they, they didn't really change anything about 
at least for Potemkin, they didn't change anything about him. And I kind of feel like uh, it's going to suck for Potemkin players, at least until the actual update, which might be for a while. I feel like they might have wanted to take this wanted to take this opportunity to at least you know maybe not completely tie his hands or tie the hands of other characters who may have a rough rougher time. I mean, they, they did take something away from Potemkin, which bugs me every time I see it. Standing uh, overhead? No, uh, okay. down slash doesn't vacuum. Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember Anthony ranting about that for like a good twenty minutes at one time. Yeah. Every time I see him hit a down slash or force them to block a down slash and it doesn't pull them in, I'm just, uh, it feels icky. Hmm. Not really much of a reason to use that move otherwise. Well, it was still pretty good in the old games. I just, it bothers me that he lost all of the stuff from AC and up, and then he actually lost one of his old standard normals. The fact that he doesn't have 6k overhead anymore like blows my mind like where's the mix up now like you have you used to have to be scared when Potemkin was really close to you and of course you're still going to be scared because he might heat knuckle you but if he knocks you down and you're just standing in front of him he's probably just gonna he's either gonna it's gonna be lower throw in yeah. most cases it, the most fact likely. that he had the overhead at like that extra level because he could do 6k 2h into heat knuckle and that just did a ton and then he dropped you in front of him, and he's like, yep. I can see how that might be a problem in this version of the game, though, because people would just be like, great, here comes another 40%. I mean, I wonder. So, I wonder if their concern has... was uh, doing overhead YR seeing it and then just immediately command throwing somebody. Yeah, but, I mean, you have Chip who can YRC teleport and punish anything on screen. Like, if they were going to think that far ahead for Potemkin, you would have thought somebody would have thought that far ahead for Chip. Well, the Street Fighter 4 has taught us anything. They think things out for one character, and then... And then you don't <laughs> then pay he your died. bills. Yeah. Yep. And then you don't pay your Time on. Warner bills. Obviously, Roadrunner is not running for this guy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Sitting there eating them pellets. But, so, yeah, from... Well, and, oh, oh, go on. for it, Gibby. I was just going to say, from an outsider's perspective, it it looks great, like in like visually, it looks amazing. This is I, I've said this plenty of times. By far, this is by far the best looking goddamn fighting game right now. It's like two two D fighting game, um, probably just best looking fighting game in general. Uh, the new characters look fun, but I'm just upset that I'm not seeing that much of a character variety right now in all the match videos I've seen. Yeah, because I I don't think I've seen Venom. Like I've I've seen him in earlier. He's apparently like just I guess. It's the the tiers are really stratified in Japan, or for whatever reason, characters just aren't popular. Mm. That sucks. I mean, I believe that really, because like, even though, you know, we we see a lot of soul, we see a whole lot of soul. It's he's still not the best, but we still see a lot of him because he's the easiest to play, I guess. Well, and he's a very popular character too. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like he's a super popular character, so people are just like, you know, I could pick a character who's just as easy and maybe a little more versatile, but I really like soul. Yeah, whereas, you know, you have some of the, like, Venom, who's never been that popular a character, and he doesn't seem to be that good as well, so... From what I've noticed, all the people playing Venom are the Venom specialists from the other games. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Like, it's nothing has changed. Yeah. Also, um, with new characters, they also showed off that... Uh, what's his name? Lion, I believe? Leo. Leo. Yeah, the, yeah. the trailer showed a lot of potential characters, actually. So, we have... Uh, Dr. Paradigm. Dr. Yep. Yeah, Dr. Paradigm, which is the lizard dude from uh, Overture. He's a uh, he's a bird dinosaur, thank you, sir. Uh, bird dinosaur professor. Yep. Birds and are dinosaurs. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, damn. Like, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, you know what? Then Dr. Paradigm is the missing link. How yep. about that? He go. confirms the link right there. And he's a doctor. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he's Actually, had a if he becomes playable... If he becomes playable... Yeah, see, you, you know my you know my penchant for uh, stupid fucking characters. So PhD stands for pretty huge dinosaur. <laughs> yup. But he looks tiny. Yeah, he did actually in that. Well, maybe he's big. Maybe he's like one of those baby raptor ones. So he's big for his size. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. But then there are the, the like the like, four guys that kind of look like Q. The Q committee. Yeah. 
I don't know who those are supposed to be. I expect them to be unmasked and then have like completely new designs. Oh man, I'm pretty sure it's just old gear characters that have been brainwashed and it's like boom, revealed yo, it's biking. Like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> wow. That makes no sense. The character still <laughs> looked nothing like biking. He had two arms, now all of a sudden she has one. This makes no sense. I thought it was a guy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. That's how these character reveals work. They're oh. stupid. No, I think I, oh. I seriously think those three characters are just like characters they're trying to like you know they're gonna reveal later on and just gonna give them like completely crazy designs and you're gonna wonder wow how did they get all this hair under those like fedoras? No, yeah, that, that's actually that's actually a good thing to do. You show off like potential characters, put masks on them, put like gigantic dresses or robes or whatever, so it's hard to make out what they are, and then boom, just release them. Like, what wow, if that- they're all? What if the what if the four are actually one character and one, and you just control four cues at once? Oh shit. <laughs> That would be really wacky. You yeah. just do four dash punches in all different directions. I'd, I'd like to shit. see how Daisuke handles this. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'll make it work. Yep. Well, yeah, and then we saw that guy who was pretty much... What did you say his name was? Leo? Yeah. yeah. He's, like a, he's like a cross between Slayer and Ragna and... Who's that other guy? Kai? Blue? Valkenheim? Val- not Valkenheim. The freak- Actually, I guess I could see a little Valkenheim. Oh, Asriel. That's what it was. Asriel, yeah. At first I thought it was Izuna, but I guess it's not. There's no way that's Izuna. Hey, man, I was like, hey, he changed some other designs. Maybe grew his hair out even further. Decided to start dressing up like, you know, Ragna. So, I wonder what, like, his whole thing's going to be. What if he just transforms into a lion? I don't think that'll happen. He'll, I mean, he'll probably just sort of be that vein of just hits like a truck bully character. Ezreal. Yeah, but we already what's... have really limited Slayer. Yeah, I was like, yeah, Slayer, your time is done here. What if he's like better Slayer and you're just like, why would I'm you... I'm going to cry. <laughs> Not like that. I'm going to cry. Oh, speaking of that, what's up with this picture going around on the internet of Slayer without facial hair? What is that shit? I don't know. Like, is that official? Is that Photoshop? I don't know. I don't like it's it. It's Photoshop. I know. I'm just saying, I don't like it. <laughs> They also removed some of the wrinkles in his face. Yeah, they made him look like young, pretty slayers. Like, well, what? This this man is he's so pretty. <laughs> I mean, he's a vampire. So technically, he could do that to himself at any moment. I'm looking at this video, and Doctor Paradigm looks like he just was valedictorian of his class. That's all I know. He never wants to stop letting you know, dude. I kept this mortarboard on for. Yeah, a exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, they keep that on him, so you know he's a doctor. Oh, that's why they do it. That's how it works in the back door. You got to keep your mortarboard on. Mm-hmm. What if Leo just hits you with, like, every time he hits you, like, you get, like, the opponent gets a tweet update that says Leo tweets, and it's like, you oh, know. Oh, God, you need like, to stop. They're, Leos are crazy loyal. You know. <laughs> okay, um, Mr. Time Wander, please kill his internet right now. <laughs> please. Just, just let him go. Okay. So, was there anything else that was revealed for gear? Not um... really. No. As far as I know, that was about it. Oh, and the other thing, I was uh, a buddy of mine linked me to something on Dust Loop with uh, some guy saying that he played. I guess he played the PS3 version at TGS. Okay. And it looked identical to arcade. It looked and feels just like arcade. Damn. Really? I don't see why I wouldn't. Yeah. So. So that's. I guess that's a good sign because the the problem is everyone's been seeing it on PS4. Yeah. And they've been wondering how it's going to look on PS3. I want to know is that if it's viable to play on PS3, will it become a PS3 standard game instead of just uh, making possibly. everybody? Because like you think about it for tournaments, you know, are we going to want the best looking version, or are we just going to want the version everybody is most likely to be able to play? Well, from the start, you're going to want the more more accessible version, which will be the PS3 yeah. version. Yeah. The um, real question is if there are really any differences between the two, and if yeah, they both that's play what at the frames. And yeah. no, one, no one's going to find out until the game comes out. Well. What's going to be weird is, since they've still promised cross-play, if there are differences in the games, that's going to be a huge problem. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I frame, don't know. Frame rate, fucking... Yeah. Also, we'll see. The, we'll see. They finally showed off the Guilty Gear stick that's being made by Sanwa. And oh, yeah, I took a look at that, just briefly. Yeah, it's getting mixed reviews right now. Some people like it, some people... Say it's too much. Yeah. It's got a lot of buttons. It's got buttons. It's got switches. It's meant for PS3 and PS4. 
it's got quite a few start buttons on it. I don't, I don't know. I just want to say right now that I think they put the, the the buttons on that stick might be equal to the amount of belts on the characters in Guilty Gear. Yeah. Okay, I thought you were going to say the amount of belts on the characters in Final Fantasy, because that's got a lot of belts. Oh, no, that's like more like, you know, freaking that crazy stick that they keep talk, posting pictures of. But no, yeah. like that's that's what I kind of looked at. Them. I'm like, wow, man, like those buttons were belts. It'd be a Guilty Gear character. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's going to be launching with the game. So right now, Sando says they're only going to be selling it in Japan. It's going to go for, I believe, 200 to 250 Ouch. U.S. And yeah, it's really expensive. Yeah. But well, it's going to be a collector's item from the sounds of things. Very limited oh, yeah. run, all that stuff. So. Well, and then you also got to remember, too, that there is the heavy rumors that, well, I mean, Markman has basically about said that they're doing an excerpt stick. Yeah. And I mean, he showed off a, he showed off like a, a prototype version on his Instagram. Mm-hmm. I think it was during like just a, like the very beginning of TGS. Yeah, it was shortly after the um, Sano stick was announced. He so, and yeah, like it's most likely going to use the body of the TE2, and it's yeah. going to have a gear overlay. And that's boom. TE2 is a nice looking stick. I like it. Well, and the PS3, uh, it's going to be compatible on PS3 and PS4. If it's any, because that's what the the ultra stick is compatible for both. Oh, so okay. and I think, yeah, and I think the uh, the Japanese release uh, Persona stick will also be compatible with both. Oh, so cool. I see no reason to just wait and get that then. Because yeah, I know. I mean, unless you're a big stick collector like Mark. Wait, Mark collects sticks. Yeah, thought he just makes them. You know, little known fact. Huh. Go him. Go him. Yeah. He's probably gonna buy all of them. Yeah, probably. Uh, what else? Gear related? I think that was it for gear. Yeah, that was actually it was yeah. mostly about play. I think. Yeah. They, they didn't have anything else really to unveil. That doesn't mean I don't Dude. think they're gonna like stop unveiling stuff. I think they still got a couple more things to like at least drop. They need at least one more character. I think. Oh yeah. They did announce a demo for PlayStation Network, PlayStation Plus. I think. Users. There's going to be some kind of demo in October. Maybe it's only in Japan. I don't know. I didn't yeah. see the details. They said it was for Japanese PlayStation Plus users only, which uh, you know, we okay. can, I think we can still do that. If you, yeah, you go all the way backwards and. Yeah. That's a lot well, of fucking work. Wants to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. What if it's like just pretty much the full game, except, you know, you get the game over screen after every match? That'll never happen. I know. <laughs> You're just trying to make people angry now. I know. I'm just trying to dream, Paul. Most likely it'll be like a demo with two to four characters. Most likely yeah. two new characters, Soul and Kai. Or Soul and Sin. I would be other. surprised if we get the two new characters, honestly. It'll be Soul, mm-hmm. Kai, and maybe one other is what I would imagine. Oh, man, that's such a yeah. tough call, too, because, like... It's not a tough call. You no, because like, do you do you want do you want one of your selling points to be front and center, or do you want like you know people to just to be salivating for this until December? You make people salivate for this shit. Yeah. You give them Soul Kai, and then you just throw in Potemkin because no one wants to play Potemkin. That's what yeah, you do. That's what I'm saying. Just or like, better yet, Venom. No one is playing Venom. There you go. <laughs> maybe Put him people, in your maybe people will start. They can just like use all the lesser played characters for the demo. And be like, hey, have fun. What if there's the one guy that only has the demo? Like that one person, only with the demo, that becomes the Venom main because of it. <laughs> that would have a killer instinct. More power to him. Yeah. Well, isn't Ki technically one giant demo if you don't pay for it? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know I how guess. they're handling that. Those... Speaking of Ki, DJ Combo apparently came out today. Season two officially starts tomorrow, and I have no idea what the release schedule is on their characters. Honestly. I'm still waiting for Cinder to be announced. I think that's going to be last. That makes me sad. Yeah. <coughs> no Tusk, don't care. Oh, you're going to do no buy, no buy, but for no Tusk, no buy? Yep. Damn, you're one of those idiots? Shit. Yep. I hated everyone who said that for the King of Fighters games. And then, <laughs> yep. I don't and think then we can be friends anymore. They bought KOF 13. No, no, no. They bought KOF 13, and they did not play... My. I mean, somebody. Of course they did. They do. Yeah, I guess. At home, alone in the room with the lights off. 
Oh yeah, yeah that's true. I definitely lost to a my player in, in 2012. Evo. You lost to everybody. I got out of my pool. We're not gonna talk about that. I mean, yeah, I got out of my pool at Evo 2012 KO13 tournament. Yeah. Yeah, you got out of your pool last year too. Yeah. Go you. No, not this year, but last year definitely. No, yeah, last year. Uh, I'd say this year. Well, actually, kind of uh, speaking of KI, even though I'm probably not going to play the game, I do like how they're starting to adapt, like sort of a, you know, how would I call it, uh, online game sort of release date sort of thing going on, where they have seasons and they're like, hey, here's more stuff for you. I think it's actually a really smart release schedule, and it also gives players a good jump in point because it's like season one is over, okay. <laughs> Now there might be balance changes as well as new characters for Season 2, so that's also a good jump-in point. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really smart way to keep the game relevant and to make it still make it fresh every year so that people don't feel like it's stagnating. Yeah, because it feels like they're actually working towards something every season. <sighs> I think yeah. like in ter like another, I, I guess the alternative to that would be like Mortal Kombat 9 where they just kind of just dropped updates on you and yeah. you kind of knew they were coming but not really like oh is this like when you know, they were coming yeah yeah so I mean that's also kind of alright because you know you, you, it's good that a company was working towards perfecting the game constantly but at the same time I feel like they could have handled it better oh definitely but it's interesting because I remember when KI was about to come out we, we liberally shit on that game yeah and as the content's been releasing, I actually find myself kind of wanting to try it out. So I feel like whoever's behind that, those wheels, is doing a good job, a good press job, because they're making me more interested in the game as time goes on. So, I mean, that's a success at that point. That is a success. Like, how many fighting games do you see that come out and they're just, like, not promoted, right? <laughs> Most of them. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm am looking at one right now, honestly. It's pretty much my entire collection. Wow. Well, yep. you have a lot of KOF games. Exactly. Uh, last from TGS that I know of, at least, was the small Tekken Seven presentation on the Mad Cat stream by Harada, who came out and announced the new character Catalina, who is a Savat-style fighter, and apparently a loudmouth Latina. Come on. Mm. Really? Really? Is this what we're doing? Okay. <laughs> I, but, I, I'll i be honest, I didn't I didn't know about it. I saw the pictures of her, and I saw that there was some discussion about how her personality was supposed to work, and I thought that was weird, because I'm like, it's fucking Tekken, it's a fighting game, who cares about her personality? Now that I'm hearing it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a, that's an, that's an interesting, you know, path to take. The... The the interesting thing about it, though, actually, is that they're saying the character is going to be vocal in game, which is fairly new for Tekken because a lot of times the only time you heard sound in Tekken was a few moves had vocal cues that people would use to train themselves to. Oh, this is a low coming now because I'm hearing this very odd sound. So if she's talking all the time like Street Fighter characters or Guilty Gear characters, that would be a Big sea change for Tekken, especially if other characters start doing it too. I'm thinking it's even going to be more than that. Like she's just going to be talking like all the time, just talking hella shit. Yeah, just talking mad shit. It's going to annoy the crap out of the opponent. And just be like, fuck, what the hell am I supposed to be listening to? Uh, the other thing is, and I, I believe she's going to be playable during the beta tests in October, along with another new character who they didn't reveal, but they said that character is going to use a system that has not been seen in Tekken, but that players of 2D games will find very familiar. And the only thing a lot of people can come up with is a super meter. Hmm. I mean, Soul Calibur V had a super. Super meter, excuse me. I wouldn't be surprised if Tekken did. Do you think maybe that's their way of testing the waters on Tekken Cross Street Fighter? Anything's possible at this point. We still don't even know what that game is doing. Yeah, it's it's quote unquote in development. It's good enough for me, man. <laughs> but I'm interested to see what this new this new 2D element they're introducing. They also said that there's going to be two 
system changes, two new additions to the system in Tekken that have not been in Tekken before. So hopefully that's one of them, and there's only one other thing. They haven't said what is returning. They haven't said if Bound's coming back. They haven't said anything about how walls are going to work. Uh, or the crush system. So it's so much up in the air about that series right now. Tekken 7, they did say, we'll have a much smaller cast. And for whatever reason, they're focusing on arcade net play. Hmm. Hmm. Not a fan of that, really. I mean, in Japan, that's going to do great, which is probably, you know, only place it's going to be released in anyway, so obviously that... Well, that's really not so. necessarily true. Apparently, they mentioned in the interview that they're planning on getting the game into as many hands in places like North America and Europe as possible. Wow. Oh, nice. So, I don't know what that's going to mean. Because obviously we already have Banapass and Tekken Online here in the U.S., but that's all due to round one. I don't... Then that's round one. While it's expanding right now, obviously there is soon to be a store opening in Chicago. There's one, I think, going to be in NorCal? Yeah, supposedly they're going to be building one in San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've heard there are also rumors about a Texas store, but I don't know if that's true. So they're expanding, obviously, more east, like because the stores are doing well. But I don't know what Europe will have in terms of that. If they're working on their own network code, maybe they're also trying to work on their own network in general so that it won't use, like already pre-established uh, things such as Anessica or an Allnet or whatever. So maybe this might be something entirely new altogether that is in-house. Oh, or, yeah. Or maybe they got a partner with like a big company infrastructure thing like on PC or something, you know? So who knows? I honestly think they're probably going to base it on the Tag 2 netcode because the Tag 2 netcode was amazing. Apparently from what I've heard, is that they want to make the netcode even better than ever before. Like, Harda uh, realizes that netcode is very important, so hopefully we'll be just seeing amazing netcode in the arcade and amazing netcode at home. So That would be awesome. The, yeah. on, the only thing, though, is, and Eris from Avoiding the Puddle brought this up, he did a little video about the whole announcement, is he said that if they're focusing this much on arcade netplay, it's quite possible that the console version of this game will not be coming out for quite a bit of time. Yeah, and you figure the online will be good, like decent to good at least, because Harada did say that, you know, all online right now is shit, GGPO is shit, we can make something better. Yeah. I would well, agree and Tag 2's, I mean, Tag 2's netcode is really good. I don't know, you know, I know you guys don't play a lot of Tekken, but if you've ever played online matches... It's definitely playable. Of course, oh, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily at the highest competitive level, but we don't have anything like that here at all yet. Yeah. I played some uh, Tag 2 online. And yeah, it, it wasn't bad. Uh, when I played Revolution, there was obviously people that had some laggier things. And I don't think it was the netcode issue, but I think the accessibility, how it was a free game and, you know, certain games. Yeah, there's only so much you want to do for free. Yeah. Yeah. So, it... Playing online for the short time I did definitely helped me block low a lot because <laughs> people are dumb and they got the same to thing predict. over and over again. And then I'm just like, oh, low parry, cool. And then I'd pick them up a little bit. Like, yay, these guys are going on the most basic, you know, Yomi layer. Like, <laughs> I'm going to go low now. And then low parry and just kind of beat them up. He's not yep. expecting the fifth overhead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things like that. But. Well, um, I just ha I don't want to I didn't want to rant about it too long. I was kind of mad about it earlier, but of course, uh, no word from SNK at TGS this year. Oh boy! Yeah, uh, surprising to nobody. Surprising to nobody, of course. Um, is it a disappointment though? Yeah, I feel like they were kind of sort of building some steam a little bit. Hint, hint. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. I felt like with the momentum that they were building with the recent announcement, this would have been a perfect opportunity for them to at least, you know, 
reiterate that they're doing that. You know, that seems like, you know... Welcome uh, to the 20th anniversary of King of Fighters. For the 20th anniversary, have the 20th release of 98. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, at least they, but at least that would be something, right? At least that would be... Yeah. This is what you're forgetting, like... You don't seem to realize, like, there were there were these guys, the Ralph and Clark cosplayers, they were amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. That totally made up for the lack of SNK presence because they made they were <laughs> the SNK was, presence. That was the SNK presence. And I was, they, were, uh, they were just back breaking people, galactic phantom people. They did all that shit. I heard somebody went and asked him, like, hey, where's KOF fourteen at? And you never saw that guy again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See? They right were the over cleanup here, man. And yeah. then you just hear an explosion. Or yeah, I mean, of course you saw him again. You saw his feet dangling out of a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, I mean, you know, KO, SNK community obviously disappointed by that. I don't think that they're ignoring their fans. I just think they probably have something stewing that they feel like they'd rather just talk about on their own time instead of going to trade shows. I think SNK Playmore legitimately does not have a PR department. I think they seriously have two gorillas in a room flinging shit at each other. You know, I think, you know, it might be a thing where they don't know what they're doing and it's like a PR department, but we don't have a base in Puerto Rico. That's probably cost a lot. To <laughs> God, you know, I almost feel like that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was talking about it with Gibby earlier, and I told him like SNK needs a face. They don't have to pay him a lot of money. They just need to get him out to places. If they want a rep, if they want representation. They got to stop sending these no name, faceless re- people that work for them and don't do anything. You know, like get people that love SNK. They go all over the world and they talk about. Oh yeah, you know, waiting for this new game coming out. P- Gibby would be a great community like um uh, community manager. And I mean, I heard that they they were they wanted to do that, but I don't know what the story is on that. I feel like at at the very least, somebody who will just talk to the fans is pretty beneficial for them, because of all of the companies that are still in operation these days, they're right now they have the worst like public relations. They have like no presence outside of the fans, and the fans can only do so much. Like you know. At this point, they might as well just fucking kickstart everything. God, that would be better. Yeah, be yeah at, least, at least that would guarantee kind of... that they have to listen to the fans, or we'd have some accountability of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And like, and like, uh, that's not necessarily required. Like, we don't need to know. We don't need to know. But at the same time, they can't expect us to support them anymore. You know? You mean? Are you telling me we can't give them three point three million to make half a game? I mean, we can totally do that, and I'm pretty sure they would take the money. Will they make a game with that 3.3 million? Probably not. This is the thing people need to remember. This is uh, this is SNK. They did this. What well, they've been doing this for over a decade now. Yeah. And people are surprised, like, oh my god, why have they said anything? They just release games whenever they want. They don't. They never talk to fans. If they do, they usually take them in the back of a room make them play a game, sign an NDA, the fans slap with a gag order, can't talk about it, whatever. No, and that's but fine. they don't announce shit like, uh, until like a few months before it's coming out or a month before it's coming out. And, and, My favorite good. was SVC Chaos. Hey, guys, we're going to announce this new game at E3. Okay, cool. SVC Chaos comes out like three months later. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's cool. Oh, this game is complete shit? Damn. Okay. Never that saw that coming. Yeah. Jeez, it's pretty much the same game that was in the demo. Uh, I just, I mean, I, I guess if they don't care, if they, if they're, if they're like just like you know, hey, we'll do this when we want to, and we don't really want to work with people outside of who we're already paying. That's fine. That's just the way they do business. It's very yeah. old school. I, I will call it outdated because I think they could be doing a lot better if they're all about the money. They could be making a lot more money. Of course, they could also be looking at Capcom and saying, like, wow, those guys are idiots. They're wasting all this money on people that will never be able to return their interest. Or they could be saying those guys are idiots because they're making Street Fighter 4. No, but see, Capcom's not idiots for making Street Fighter 4. Capcom's making Street Fighter 4. People are bitching and whining about it, but they're still buying the goddamn game. Exactly. So Capcom is smart. See? 
So that's 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 how business works. You listen to people complain. You tell them, "Don't worry, guys. We'll address all of your complaints in the next iteration of this video game." They release the next version of the game. It's still shit. People buy it. And they're like, "I didn't expect it to be shit. What the hell?" Hey, but you remember, you always address the two biggest complaints. Yeah. Just so you can say, look, we addressed your complaints. Mm-hmm. And then everybody's like, but what about the rest of this list? And they're like, what list? We never saw the rest of a list. Like, you didn't complain loud well enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's and, just... Yeah, like you said, Capcom was smart. They've marketed mm-hmm. Street Fighter Four correctly and dealt with the public correctly, and everybody just keeps buying it. Yep. Like the game, hate the game, it's a successful game. Yep. It is the game that is keeping the fighting game scene afloat. Now, I wouldn't that- go that far. My other my other problem with this is the fact that SNK in the past has had a presence at trade shows. Their recent their recent pulling back. I, I don't really know what that's about. You know, I, I thought that was I thought that all just changed when Playmore took over. No, um, when it became SNK Playmore, uh, Playmore basically is the original owners of SNK. They ended up buying the company back from Ruz Azur. I forgot the name of the company. Like back in oh two oh three or some dumb shit. And they continued doing trade shows up until, I want to say, somewhere between 2009 and 2011. They slowly stopped. Uh, they no longer had a presence in the U.S. for anything. And I forgot. I think I believe they were at TGS last year. I don't know if they were at TGS last year or if they just made an announcement at TGS last year. I, I can't remember. Hmm. Got me. I just wonder what they're cooking. It's 20, 20 They keep on talking. They, they're the ones that bring it up. They they bring it up. Twentieth year. You know what they're doing? They're cooking up that anime. <laughs> Look, you guys, you guys oh, are all shit. dumb. Like the twentieth anniversary for King of Fighters. What's one of the biggest things in KOF? Like one of the things the fans love about KOF. It's the music. So you release Rhythm of Fighters. That's what you do. Okay, and it's a huge hit on the iPhones and the Androids. Is, or something like that. I don't know. I really have no idea how this game is doing. But apparently, yeah, I was about to say, Gibby, you don't even have a smartphone. <laughs> yeah. See, so this is what people like. This is what people get. When people say they like something and then a company gives it to them, they bitch about it. When people say they hate something and a company gives it to them, they bitch about it. No matter what, they're going to bitch about it. Even if KOF 14 comes <laughs> out, people will complain about it. Of course. That's accurate. I'm not expecting them not to. 99% chance I will complain about it because it's not 98. You complain you know, about 98 too. I do. What if their announcement is the U.S. release of the Weiss Schwartz King of Fighter deck? Uh, oh, Jesus. So, once again, Mr. Time Warner. Yep. Where <laughs> are them? What do we need? Cut them, guys. I'm through uh, the looking glass here, people. Cut the mic. <laughs> In other news, Strong Style is this weekend. Yes, it is. Uh, probably not going to be making it, sadly. Just for various reasons. Well, great. Yeah. <laughs> I think me and Tony are going to be the only people from SDR there. Tony, give me a red. Um, I mean, I can give you a place to stay and take you to the place, but... That's one hell of a U-turn is all I'm saying, man. <laughs> I'm not going down there to pick you up. I got 50 that says you will. Uh, 50,000? <laughs> <laughs> I got a car that says I probably won't. <laughs> but, like, I can't guarantee it, but probably won't. All right, I'm you drive a hard bargain. You know, if the car is talking to you, I think you might have a problem. <laughs> it's making noises, you know. Oh, there was actually something I wanted uh, to touch upon, Tony. Hmm. 55. 55, wow. 55. Yeah. You drive yeah. such the hardest bargains yep. over here. You're doing it. Like, like emphasis on the bargain. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so, so Strong Style is this weekend. I, I know it kind of crept up on some people. I definitely had a moment this weekend where I was like, oh shit, I put in vacation days for this a month ago. <laughs> um, well, I actually signed up, but it's just I got back from being out of town. I would be going out of town this weekend, and then I would be going out of town the following weekend. That's too much. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot of traveling. That's a lot of money spending that I don't want to do. No. Mm-hmm. Now the unfortunate part is nobody gets to watch this at home. Not yet, at least. So. Yeah, but it'll be good. It's yeah, good. the product we'll get to watch will be good. I'm just wondering if they're just gonna like. Just throw LGPs on everything and then just hack it together later. Maybe. I 
think that might be what they're going to do. Yeah. Like, It'll hmm. definitely be an adventure. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how it all shapes out. It sounds like it's going to be an awesome production. It'll just depend on how the public receives it once it's done. I think they should receive it fine. I mean, this is basically a replay, right? Well, yeah, but, you know, so many people don't want to watch a tournament after they already know the results sometimes, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right, yeah. Like, I, 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 do, I do agree that this will definitely be an endeavor for those who just are interested either in Tekken or maybe just in the production of, an, like, a, a visual... Like turning turning this all into visual media, basically, you know, the next step yeah. up in the terms of like you know just scene production. But I I yeah. also contemplate like you know whether or not everybody is just gonna be like ah what's the fucking point if it's not live it's uh, we already saw it on like event hubs and shit blah blah blah. That reminds me since I am performing security for uh, this <laughs> event, if I catch anybody reporting about this shit via Twitter. Or Reddit or anything, you're going in the dumpster. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of that, I'd like to apologize. My my security services will not be at the show due to me not being there. So, it's you okay. guys are gonna have I'll to take, deal with him. I'll take up his place by being the worst security guard ever and letting people push me around, and then I'll you know charge. I'll charge. And then you'll uh, end up in the dumpster. <laughs> no, no. I'm, then I'll then I'll push tr- press charges against him after I make him beat the <laughs> yeah. wow. Chris! You and <laughs> you scamp. I can see like I can see Tony just like fucking like talking shit to some dude or something and just being like, Man, where the hell's Chris at? Nah dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. I'm gonna be getting that that awesome sending someone to jail. I feel like that's almost a life goal at my point. Why do you wanna do that? That's so weird. Because People need to be knowing that there are laws in this country and that they need to abide by them. <laughs> and if they punch me in the face, they should expect to see a couple of years in the joint. I okay? think it's going to be in the stomach. Honestly, I've got $80 that it's going to be in the stomach. <laughs> we'll see. We'll start a pool. <laughs> <laughs> Every tournament it gets doubled. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that that should be cool. Um, I, I mean, I, is Steve coming up? As far as I know, he's not. He Man. told me he wasn't thinking that he was going to get the time off, so he didn't register. Uh-oh. So, I don't think he's going. And I just heard this morning, or rather this afternoon, that Team Italy misses connecting flights, so... Well, Jeez. you know, they have a few more days to, you know... Yeah, I was about to say, they at least yeah, have his connecting flight. I was wondering why he tweeted that then. I was like, what the fuck? Well, because he wanted to let people know they missed the connecting flight. I'm thinking he tried planning stuff... Uh, before the event, like a few days before, maybe just get people together, do do a stream so people can actually watch these players play. Yeah. And then not stream shit so people can suffer and go like, oh, man, I can't wait for this post-production awesomeness because it's going to happen. Are, are you not a fan of this? No, I like it. I like the idea because, okay, technically it's not new, but for this, this day and age, it's new. You don't show people shit live. You record it all. You give them magical post-production. It's it's the first time someone's actually doing this, like doing it on a professional level. So I'd like to see how it comes out and possibly future events doing the same thing. Because if this is successful, then everyone's going to – like not everyone, but most people will start doing it in the future. Because yeah. why wouldn't you do it? If this is successful and it makes your product look better, there's absolutely no reason not to do this. So what if you're not getting a live feed? You get much. You get a much better quality product. Correct. Simple. I think – what could be really cool is if this does well, this would encourage people to start setting up their own, not necessarily doing this for majors, but having their own like special tournaments for different games, you know, that maybe don't get the shine at majors. Mm-hmm. You could do something, you could do something, say, like a Vampire Savior Invitational. Record it like that and then post, do a lot of nice post production work where people who haven't played the game might be able to listen to this analysis and get into it. Mm-hmm. Like That's definitely something that could be used down the road for ideas like this. But we'll see how it goes. And then we put them on DVDs. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah. It worked before, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> DVDs. <laughs> Not Blu-rays. We can't afford that shit. What is this? Evo 2006? We're, oh, we're on VCDs, guys. Death. It's all standard def. Oh. Uh... But I really think it could. I think, honestly, for one thing, it encourages diehard players to go instead of staying at home. That's a good thing. Yep. And then 
the post-production elements can entertain or educate players. Because, see, the coolest thing about the post-production is we're going to get commentary and these people are going to have all the facts in front of them. So we're not going to get comments about, oh, you know, this guy screwed up. This movie actually isn't this many frames. It's actually this many frames. It all should be right. So you're going to be able to learn from it and take what they say as the truth. That's cool. Yeah. I think it's a I think it's a really good vision for the future of what streaming can be. Because streaming can be one thing, but then the idea of actually having pre recorded almost like a, a pay per view style event could be cool. But it's not really pay per view because you're not paying for it. No. And that's a good thing. Because you guys yeah. don't want to pay pay for anything, trust me. So I don't know. We'll see. I think it's cool. I think it is too. I think we're going to have a, at the very least, a very interesting time. Yep. I wish I could go. I know, man. I'm just going to be a jackass by myself. Uh, you know, I'll you never have a hard time doing that. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to wake up in time to actually go out there, but then I also have to leave at some point so that way I can go to work. Yeah, I'm actually, that's actually my girlfriend's birthday that weekend too, so. Uh, damn. Take and turn it or make my girlfriend happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the answer is, Chris. Take Neither. your girlfriend to the tech and tournament. Oh my oh, god. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and then get really drunk. <laughs> oh, She'll hate no. you forever. Oh god, I can't if I have to bring her the girl the baby's coming too. Yeah. Well, yep. That's why I said she would hate you forever. Yep, probably shit. Hmm. Well, we got anything else? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah what yeah. you got? What you got? So, Chris, did you watch the grudge match between Alex Myers and oh. Low Tier Gat? I did, and I gotta say, I think they were listening to me because there was definitely a certain level of showmanship involved in the. In the in the pre-fight, there was definitely some so much in the pre-fight that led to a little bit of more buzz, you know, generating for the event. Um, Mondo, by the way, handled it phenomenally. Mm-hmm. Like that is how you hype up whatever. Like that dude could hype up fucking ketchup pops- popsicles. Ugh. Yeah. So exactly. I didn't see this. Why did you guys find this entertaining? I haven't seen any of the grudge matches yet. <laughs> because it was stupid. Yeah, it's yeah. extremely stupid. It's fun. It's stupid. It's comedy. I I don't think that I th- I don't doubt that later on down the line this could lead to something a little more serious. But for what it is right now, it's you know it's a little fucking you know sideshow. It's like hey you know low tier god's gonna get beat on stream by Alex Myers, but before he does that, he's gonna talk hell of shit. And Alex <laughs> Myers, really nice guy. I like Alex Myers, but he's not gonna talk shit. So you kind of have to lead him into it. You know, nothing too controversial, but like you know simple questions like hey. What makes you think you can beat this guy? And Alex Alex Maya asked him that, and that's a very tough question to ask if you're not trying to offend someone. Oh, so what you're telling is they're sort of leading it like reality TV. Yeah, lead people into saying it's, something controversial. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of like WWF shit. Like that's oh, it, there's a thing. Promos. It's it's like that's well, I would it would be better scripted because you know some of the, some of these kids don't have personalities and they can't really talk shit. So it would be better to be scripted. Right. The, like. Well, the, Low tier guy didn't do that bad of a job. Alex Meyer seemed kind of awkward on it, like when he was talking about it. Uh, the gameplay, the gameplay was was okay. It wasn't that bad. It actually, but, that's actually something I was going to remark on really quickly. Is that Myers said that there should be no reason they should play. That they, it was just it was a foregone conclusion. Yeah. That Myers was going to win, and yet it came down to what five the three with the very last deciding game that would have put, you know, made it four to four. Being actually pretty close. Yeah. And with low tier God having a really slow start of starting with Rolento initially and essentially throwing an entire game away makes you wonder how much closer could this have been? That is true. That one you know, game. If uh, low tier God knew how to crouch fierce when Alex Myers jumped in, it would have been a much closer game. You know what he yeah. did instead? He activated Ultra. 
let both balls hit and then command grab for the win. That was pretty good. And the model oh, about letting both balls yeah. hit. Like, that was a smart move. And I'm like, how can you hate on that? You know, that's, that yeah. was the, that is the highlight. That is the kind of shit now, that a night later, the guy in the suit is going over top ten plays in the FGC on this weekend, and that's like number three. Like, the one thing, though, is that one of the stipulations I think that I had caught was that Low Tier God had to cut a promo afterwards, or cut a, cut a tape saying that he is low tier fraud or he, he's trash. He, yeah, or he's trash, right? Like, is that trash. still going to happen? Because he had to do the push ups. He yeah, had to do the push ups, which was whatever. Be the, the dude's in pretty good shape. Yeah, that dude's like a push up machine right now. <laughs> like, he's got videos of him at the gym on his YouTube. <laughs> oh, this guy is swole as shit. Like he's, I'm pretty sure he could just flex, and he's got more muscle in his bicep t- than uh, Alex Myers has got in his entire body. I mean, I wouldn't bet against that. <laughs> I just, I really enjoy the hilariousness of all these guys who obviously are not super outgoing, but they talk hella shit behind closed doors. And the minute you put them in front of the camera, they ain't got shit to say. Nope. Yeah. See, like that's hilarious. I, I'm really waiting for the person that's going to be able to cut a promo, like the right promo. Well, like we, I honestly thought Myers had it. It was so set up for him. Like the cards were just stacked. Like you don't even have to talk so much shit about the other guy. You could hype yourself up. Like you could Steiner this dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like hit him with the math. He's like, yo, I'm you know I'm, I'm Alex Myers. Look at my win rate. I put in, I put whoever Japanese player on notice at Evo. I'm R Kappa approved. That's however many hundreds of people strong. You know, just build that means up. I have twenty five thousand kappas behind me at all times. That's time. a lot of kappas. <laughs> twenty five thousand you know, kappas. Kappa you know what, the yeah. number of rounds you need to win. That's fifty thousand kappas. Just you like don't a- have that many kappas. <laughs> <laughs> what What bothered me about Alex Myers during the promos when um, Low Tier God was doing his thing? I guess he's got this shit where he does like some kind of yeah. He like, does the pose dance. Yeah. Alex Myers does it with him. Yeah, you're infringing on this dude. Yeah, Stop. You, yeah, had to do that. That. you you hate this guy. This guy hates you. If you two were to meet in a dark alley, you two would be stabbing each other. Well, okay, you do not do this him, yeah. shit. God damn, that, that that really upset me. I just looked at I looked at the screen I'm like, no, Myers, why? No. No. Well, and, your and, God tried to insult him, so I'm glad for that at least. And I'll say this. If Myers was actually worrying about losing, then maybe he shouldn't have tried to come and talk to shit. Like, oh, we shouldn't play at all. Then gets nervous. Like, really? You that? Are you that confident? That's what I was. That's what I was saying last week. Where I was just all like, dude, this is just like one of those situations where like this guy's super like just solid all the time, until somebody's like, you know, you a punk. I know every move you make, and you've never played more than two matches with somebody in a in a tournament setting or in a public setting. You know. So and here's Myers my looked like he was gonna crack. So here's my question: Who set this match up? I think they did. Is this set up by level up in Wednesday Night Fights, no, or is it, this it like a player like, has to go to Wednesday Night Fights? It honestly seems like what they're doing is that they have Wednesday Night Fight attendees that happen to have beef with other attendees, mm. proposition via with their idea. It was like, hey, you know, I'm EX. I don't care for this Sid Dro character. I think he's trash. <laughs> like, I, he maybe put me out in the tournament last week. I'm rather miffed about it. I want my chance to redeem myself in front of the public. Yeah. So it seems like that's the way. So I think in this case, it was uh, low tier God coming at Myers. And then the discussion began. And finally, the match happened last week. Mm. Like, I don't know what the next one would be. Like, there's some rumblings about Velociraptor, who is a Wednesday Night Fights regular, uh, and the resident Gokin, going up against. one of the cross the cross counter guy, the Gutex or whatever. I'm not. Yeah, that needs to I, happen, dude, because that dude's been yeah. like getting the shit kicked out of him by Gutex for like three months now. Man, I don't know. We'll see. And like, I the think idea... John, John's a clever enough guy. I want to see Velocir. Like, he was going off during the low tier god match. Like, he yeah. came out with his sleeves rolled up, the letters LTG written on his <laughs> bicep, and with a dumbbell, and he proceeded to flex during the match. <laughs> But, like, serious, like, I don't think he was flexing. I, he was trying to get his flex on. He's just lifting his dumbbell up. I didn't really see much flexing going on. You know, I'm just... He got one rep. 
Yeah, and he, I, I like. I mean, I like it. I, I give him an A for effort, and everything. But the fact that he was slowly struggling after doing so well, what do you expect? It was, it was like a twenty-five pounder. What that was want? a twenty-five or easy. Like. Yeah, I was gonna say, Velociraptor looks like he's got my arms. That dude should have brought a ten, maybe tops. Yeah. <laughs> what he should have done to make it better, he should have just like gotten fa- like those fake weights that you put on these things. Oh yeah, and just painted numbers on it. <laughs> yeah, that like would've that would have been perfect. It's just the fact that he. Like just bullied his way through the crowd, just go. Oh, look at me! Oh my God, that was good. Got to get. Oh my God, that would be amazing. You got tickets. But I'm saying, there there are people out there in this community that would totally ham it up on camera. I mean, that's half of these people just want to get on camera so they can act like a jackass anyway. Yeah. (sighs) See, our our fact checker just. Thank, thank you, Badoofus, for being the fact checker. Velociraptors aren't known for their strong arms. See, I forgot about this. Well, in that case, he could have lifted it with his powerful talons. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now, those things are pretty tough. Mm-hmm. But Cut yeah, man's I, yeah, it was good. I liked it. The idea is really good, and I'm glad it sounds like it's been entertaining. Are they releasing the grudge matches as separate videos in the YouTube? Do you know? I think so. I believe yeah. so. Because I might actually go watch those. Because they actually sound like fun. I would say the first one was actually pretty. That one seemed pretty legit because there was definitely Which like was you the know. First one? Uh, the first EX one versus... was Sidro versus EX, okay. and there was like some like some honest to goodness like mad faces between those. Awesome, two Awesome real hate. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> it's like if those two guys were able to cut any legitimate promo, even a mediocre one, it would have been the best because the animosity between them was. Wow, palpable. <laughs> That's some animosity right there. Yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Time Warner. Thank mm-hmm. you, dude. So like, like, like they could have just had them read off their fucking Facebook posts to each other. God. That would be. Well, that's what Viya. Now, that's what they should force them to do. No, yeah, like Vi- remember when you said yeah. this shit? <laughs> yeah. So what would happen was uh, when they did the pre-match shit. It's uh, Vaya's like, oh, so what did low tier God say? What happened? He's like, oh, uh, you know, Myers like, uh, well, you know, he called me a punk. He's, he's like, nah, man. His exact words is said, "You're I, I forgot what it was. Something like blah blah blah. You called him the p word. Like yeah, it was something to that effect. I was like, whoa, what the hell? Damn, why are you saying this on level up? Wow. Well, Look at this. <laughs> I mean, that's not like it's the first time. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Look, it's just just pretend. Just go along with it. Oh, so, okay. yeah, I was like, whoa, they're using foul language again. This is sick. This is, and then it it went back to normal. Also, Eris on commentary for this is perfect. Oh, I imagine so. Like, people are giving Eris shit. So, like, people are giving him shit for saying, Amigo, like, fuck those people. <laughs> Why are you going to give Eris shit for this? I've never heard him not say Amigo to somebody. Yeah. Or partner. Also, or... I, th- I, think it was supposed to be er- yeah, I think it was supposed to be Eris and Steve commentating yeah. together. But I guess Steve was being a nerd. I don't know Tekken. what happened. He, he was on there for a second and then jumped off and then they got... And then they got some other poor bastard on there. And, like, here's the thing. When you commentate with Eris, you'd better be able to combat the fucking force that is Eris's voice. Or else you're going to get swallowed up. And people are just going to be like, yeah, you can just go sit to the side and let Eris talk. Which is not a bad thing. It's still an entertaining product. Mm-hmm. I still enjoyed it. That's the thing is I think people got to understand that they're playing these up for just straight entertainment, not necessarily, not necessarily factual correctness. Right. That's why Eris is doing commentary for Street Fighter Four. Exactly. Yeah. Come Perfect. on. <laughs> like, this, I mean, literally, they are doing this like it's wrestling, basically. Mm-hmm. You think so. Michael Cole knows how to wrestle? <laughs> no, I don't. I've seen him in the ring. I don't even well, think Michael Cole it. knows how to commentate. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Well, Sometimes he has these days where I don't think he even knows what's going on in the ring. Nope. He's like, I wrote this shit. Why can't I get it right? <laughs> He didn't write anything. Vince is in his ear all the time. Oh. He's, he's, well, I don't want to talk about it here, but he has claimed to have written some stuff, but who cares? No one cares about Michael Cole. True. I don't. Any other? We got anything else? Well, we were supposed to talk about that, uh, that what's your, what games you want in Evo thing that Mr. Wizard brought up, but I kind of feel like, well, it's pretty obvious. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, we got next week. Yeah, something. we get to yeah. that next week. I feel like that would actually be a very interesting conversation because there are literally three anime games that I all think should deserve to be at Evo and would have yeah. pretty decent hey. entries. Maybe they all should then. Maybe. Wow. Well, you say you see, maybe they should, but you know, historically, Evo is known for only having one slot for anime. Well, yeah, but things are always historically known about something, but it doesn't now, necessarily my, my, make I'm, it the construct of social, you know. <laughs> says you. Jeez. 
I, I have a I have a scheme that may work out, but I'll elaborate it on on it more next week. But I think we could call each th- each one of these games a different kind of game. Unio yeah. is obviously an anime game. Exard is not an anime game, while having very colorful Japanese animation inspired sprites or models rather. It is not an anime game, and Persona Four Ultimax is an RPG. Well, there you go. <laughs> Tune in next week to hear Chris spew some bullshit about how he expects to get all three of these games in Evo this coming year. So, for everybody here at Super Desperation Radio, thanks for listening, and good night, and good luck. <laughs>